Okay, so we, we've heard of uh, Team Challenge there. The, uh, the women's work is based down in uh, West Wales, Gorse Lass. So we've had teams from there to the church in the past, and it's good to hear another life that is, is, is going along the right track and a life that is uh, seeking to follow God's path. <coughs> Uh, we're also playing for Christian Aid, for Mary, for Mary in particular, uh, and uh, we, 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 we saw a video of Myanmar a few weeks ago, if you were here on that occasion. And also India, India is a very big country, they've got a lot of problems at the moment, uh, they don't have a good health service, which you know, they're really feeling the results of that at the moment. Uh, but particularly for Christians in India, we think of India as quite a Western friendly nation, which they are. But uh, the Christians often get a very raw deal. I can remember hearing a testimony in, I think it was your front room, from someone who was really treated very cruelly because she came to faith. Because there are people who are some of the extreme Hindus. And, and there are Muslims there as well in India, even though it's largely a Hindu country. So let, let's come before God uh, in prayer. <clears throat> Mighty God, we thank you that you are our Father. We thank you that as a Father you take care of us. We thank you that as a Father you protect us. And we thank you that as a Father you provide for all our needs. Not necessarily what we want but what we need and we thank you that through jesus christ you are our father you are someone if we trust in christ we're someone united to uh, the almighty to uh, someone who is eternal because of our trust in jesus christ because you have brought us to faith in him and father we we worship you for that we pray for uh, the organisations that we've named who seek to bring Christ to broken lives. We think of uh, Team Challenge in particular, and we pray for the staff there that you would give them wisdom, you would mm. give them discernment, that you would give them patience, and you would give them an extra measure of your spirit to minister to those who are in uh, extreme need. Uh, not only of Christ, but also for their their life in many ways. Uh, we thank you too for Christian Aid, which has over the years sought to bring the message of Christ uh, alongside people together with a practical help. And Father, we pray for Mary in particular, that you will give her your, your wisdom and your grace. Uh, help her when she might feel that she doesn't know what to do uh, because you will know what to do and uh, you will guide her if she asks. Mm. And uh, Father, we pray uh, again for Myanmar and the, the situations we learnt about there recently. And Father, for India, we pray for the word of the gospel to go there strongly. Uh, we believe that the message of Christ came to India before it came to Britain, in actual fact. And uh, Father, we pray that you will establish your work there, that you will keep Christians strong in their faith, strong in you, and Father, that you will help them where they face uh, persecution and difficulty. We pray too that you will restrain the hand of those who are uh, extreme but of another religion from Christianity. Uh, we pray that you will help them to see that Christianity isn't a threat but it's rather an opportunity for their nation. Uh, and so Father we pray these prayers, we pray too for ourselves and for any who are not here. In Jesus name. Amen. Uh, so I'm gonna um, tell you my testimony. Um, so, when I was growing up, um, I didn't really, my mum and my dad divorced, 
when I was about two. I didn't really get to know my dad, but um, I didn't really know my mum too much because we always, me and my brother, had to stay up in our rooms. But I had um, found some found what love was within family through my grandparents because I spent a lot of time with them, and I also went to Sunday school. So, but as I was growing up, um, we moved areas. My mum moved areas, and um, I endured some abuse in various areas and at school. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. I, um, um, So I would do anything just to find love, but all in the wrong places, you know. So just make friends, I'd just make friends and do anything really that would, and it just really hurt me all the time. It wasn't, I didn't grow up in a stable life um, with just not knowing what stable was really. So um, then, um, and then when I was a teenager, I did go to army cadets, so I learned some discipline there. I learned um, what was kind of right and wrong. But when I, um, but when I grew older, I discovered boys and nightclubs, and um, so, <laughs> so I went into a bit of a party life then. I was on party drugs, and. Um, I didn't necessarily drink as much then, but then I had quite abusive relationships and they're quite violent sometimes. Um, and then um, and then I started seeing my dad. Um, my dad, he um, committed suicide um, in the end. Um, he died in my arms. And at that point, I had like, I was at university um, doing a, um, a HMD in building services. But once my HMD finished, I turned to drink because I didn't have anything else to keep me going really, to keep me focused. So then my life kind of spiralled out of hand at that point. Um, my friends kind of didn't really want to know me because I was a liability when we went out. Um, I endured some situations that nobody should have endured. Um, then, um, and then um, I just I didn't want to be alive either, so I did try to attempt to take my life many times. I was under mental health, I was um, on mental health, many mental health drugs, different ones all the time. Um, but eventually um, I went into um, rehab because um, a company flew me back from Thailand um, because I took an overdose and um, I was put in the priory. But that was only a four week program. It was a private hospital. Um, so I came out, but I was still lost. I for 18 months, yeah, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, but I was, I felt so low. So that eventually I started drinking again. And again, my life just spiraled out of control. So I believe this is when God started having his hand on me because one day I went into a church, it was a Ghanaian church, and they took me to one side. I was absolutely off my head. They took me to one side and they prayed for me. And then at this point, I kind of um, had to leave my job. Um, I got another job um, in Reading. Um, and I was meant to be moving out of the house, out of the flat that I was in, into another area because of the situation I was in. And then the Housing Association phoned me up and said, oh, we've got a flat in Reading. And literally I moved into this flat because my job was in Reading. And opposite the, um, opposite the flat was a church, which was an Elim um, church. And um, so, but still, my life was still going, like, spiring out. I was getting on, getting involved with um, other people and getting involved with harder drugs. But there were situations that it all came together in the end because one day, one evening, a couple picked me up um, because there was men prowling around me and um, I was literally out of it and they brought me home 
And then I saw mental health social services and there was a lady there and I told her I started going to church because it was the music that led me there, um, the worship. And um, she, I told her I was doing Steps to Freedom and she said that she did Steps to Freedom. Anyway, as it turned out, all these people who come around me came, went to the same church, which was all nations, which was opposite me. And they kind of took me right under their wing. And the pastor there, he did um, Team Challenge. So when he was doing his testimony, it kind of took, it, the seed was planted and I thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe, but I still wasn't even at my lowest point then. Eventually I got to my lowest point and I went to him and like, I really need to get some help here. And he, um, he gave me some different um, rehabs to phone and in the end I chose Team Challenge. And so I had to, it was a hard decision. I had to give up my flat, my dog, my possessions, my job and everything. You know, I lived the double life because one minute I had I had pretended I was okay, but behind closed doors I certainly wasn't. And so I gave it all up and went to Team Challenge. And I was brought, I was loved back to life there. And you know, it is a hard program and um, it's a massive refining process. It's 11 months. I did 12 months, I had a little bit extra. Um, because I had an attitude. <laughs> Sometimes I still have, but I know how to keep my mouth shut. Um, and yeah, so I stayed there for another year volunteering because I still had a lot more refining to do. I tried to leave many times and God kept shutting those doors. Eventually um, I left and I've gone back to Reading. Um, and, you know, the Teen Challenge is one of the best places I went to. Um, it's, yeah, they do call it the Miracle Working Factory. It's where I actually decided then I wanted to follow Christ. I got baptised um, in, back in Reading on one of my weekends away. Um, it was, yeah, so I'm back, at, back in Reading. Um, I have no desire to drink, which is amazing. I don't smoke either, which is amazing. And I don't have a desire to meet, get, have anybody else in my life, you know, because I know I have God. You know, I have that filled now. I knew there was always going to be something that I was missing and now I'm not missing anything. You know, he's really just tra transformed my life so much that I, I can't thank him enough and there's just so many things that have happened. Um, I'm going to Bible College in September, Regent's Theological College, to do a degree in theology, um, which is down the church leadership track. Um, I'm not on any mental health drugs, no, none of them. Um, I do have my moments, but I know I can walk, look, I've got God walking me through mm. those times of struggles. You know, I don't have to turn to anything. I've got him. I've got people in my life. I've got people who love me, genuinely love me. Mm. I've got people that I genuinely love. There's no falseness about it. I don't have to live my life in the falseness anymore. And, you know, I just, I just praise God that he has taken me from where I was, because I would have been dead. You know, it was get, it was at that point. But he took me, he goes, come on then. You know, I know you've had enough, because you were actually asking that me to help you. And yeah, so I have to say thank you to him. And I thank everybody, you know, that are in my life. I wouldn't have done it without you. Thank mm -hmm. you.